In this step, we're going to calculate a mask, which is essentially just ones where we actually want to analyze data and zero everywhere else. You can imagine that we'd want zeros where there's no brain at all, or if there's just dead space or air because we're not interested in that. We know there can't be any neural activity in those voxels, but we would want ones where there's actually signal coming from the brain. And we do that with creating a mask. Now for this single subject analysis, we're not going to actually be applying the mask at any step in the pipeline. But if you wanted to do something like cluster correction thresholds, you could use this mask to determine what an appropriate cluster correction would be. It's created with this command 3D auto mask, and this dilate is just to make extra sure that we actually get the brain. If it starts to go into air a little bit, to space outside the brain, it's okay, but we dilate this mask by one just as a, an insurance. We do that for each run, we just apply it. It tries to calculate where in this blurred data set does it seem like there's actual brain and what's the boundary between that and non-brain. We then take an intersection of all these different masks using 3D mean, and then 3D calc is used to calculate the intersection. So just make sure that there's a non-zero number in the intersection of all three of these masks. So if it's zero in all of them, there's probably an empty voxel, just empty space. But if there is at least one of the masks that occupies a voxel, has some signal coming from it, keep that. All right, so the output of that is something called full mask. So that's across all three runs. And again, if we look at this, and as an overlay, we put this full mask on. Here is what it looks like. It's all red because it's all one color. You can see this overlay value is one. So one where it's the mask and zero where it's not. You can toggle this opacity button right here to see it a little bit better. So you can see, yeah, I mean, there seems to be one spot where there's actually, you know, some intensity, but the mask didn't cover it. That still seems to be okay. But more importantly, if you get down near the temporal lobes, there seems to be some signal dropout, and so 3D Auto Mask thinks that it's really not brain, it seems to be non-brain. So it doesn't do a perfect job, but overall it does pretty well. And in places where the signal intensity drops out a lot, this is actually relatively good. Actually that appeared to be skull, so it actually did very well. It's good to check that, and also as an underlay, have your anatomical and look at that as well. That's actually more important. So you can see that, yeah, there's some places in the temporal lobes near the cavities where there's enough signal dropout to make 3D auto mask think that there's no real brain there. So it happens, you can dilate it more if you want, but it can also lead to more false positives. Okay, so that's 3D auto mask. And in the next section, we'll cover the scaling which is the last pre-processing step before running our model.